Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at this right here. The high grade Universal Century Goop Custom from one of the best Gundam series of all time, Mobile Suit Gundam The 8th MS Team. So I will mention right here that I did done Goof because I wanted the latest Goof that has been released because I love me some Goofs and for some reason in my mind I thought it was this one right here. This one's actually from 2010 so it is 10 years old. What I was thinking about was the Goof Revive so I'm gonna have to get that on my shopping list again because this isn't necessarily the one that I wanted but I won't deny I thoroughly enjoyed it. But wait! What's that? That sounds a little bit like a sponsor? This video was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. With 500 champions to collect, each with their own skill trees and millions of artifacts to find and equip, that's literally trillions of ways to build your team. Raid has champions like Sir Nicholas. Sure, it's January now, but hey, a Santa's not just for Christmas, it's for life. Wait, no, that's a puppy. But yeah, anyway, Sir Nick can freeze your enemies and shield your allies. If Christmas isn't your jam, how about a champion that's Halloween themed? Name something more badass than an undead pumpkin wielding a scythe. He can steal enemy buffs, turn their own buffs into debuffs, and is awesome for crowd control. What I like about Raid is the challenge of progressing through the various difficulties in the campaign. Get as far as you can, die, die again, then try different strategies and team combinations to finally make it one stage further. Level up your team by sacrificing champions in the tavern or try your skills against other players in the different PvP battle arenas. And last month, Raid got their biggest ever update. The main event is here, the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 seriously badass bosses to take on. And to help everyone get started in the tower, the raid team are giving away a super special champion, Bulwark. This champion is absolutely awesome in clan boss, and he's also going to be a huge help in the tower against those bosses. If you want to get a huge head start in raid, all you have to do is hit that link down there in the description and get your free void champion, an XP booster, 50 gems, some energy refills, and even an ancient shard as soon as you get in game. You'll find your extra rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. It's that easy. Just check that link in the description. So first up, let's jump right on into that overview of absolutely everything that comes in the box. So here's the Goof Custom with absolutely all of its accessories. So what we get in here is the absolutely awesome Gatling Shield. I love this thing. The 3 barrel 35mm machine gun. The Heat Sword Type D3. The heat wire, three alternate hands including the two fists that are already attached on there, and finally a sheet of two stickers, that is it. But before we take a look at all the accessories, let's take a look at the Goof Custom itself. So anyway, there's the high grade Goof Custom out of the box snapped together with a little bit of panel lining, that is it. As usual, there is no knob cleanup, just one snip off the runners with the god hand and I just used a black panel lining pen here and there. This thing still looks phenomenal, for a 10 year old kit. This looks really damn nice. There's no denying that the Goof was an awesome Zaku but no Zaku style mobile suit, but the Goof costume just took it and made it so much more awesome. And those scenes from the 8th MS team featuring this particular mobile suit are still some of the greatest real robot fight scenes in all of anime history, hands down. This is one hell of a mobile suit. Proportions and silhouette wise, this thing looks fantastic. It looks both powerful and savage at the same time. Color accuracy wise it is definitely impressive. We have a nice clear section right in the front there for the cockpit. And the only thing that isn't really color accurate would be the thrusters round back which needs some red on the inside. But besides that, this thing looks amazing right out of the box. The only place I find this falls short in the aesthetics department is the fact that the articulation isn't the greatest and it is quite limited. I will talk about that a little bit later on in the review and not the worst down point if you're looking for this purely for display. Sticker wise there isn't really a whole lot in here just these two. One is for on that mono eye you can see right now and the other one is for on the machine gun we'll take a look at later. As for the other aesthetic aspects of this kit, seam lines for the most part are put in places that are intelligent. They look like gaps between armor so they do look quite natural. There are a couple on the tops of both of the shoulders that you may want to close up yourself but once again they're not all that noticeable and nothing is all that visible from the front. As for the mold lines, these are a little bit more apparent especially around the arms and the knobs on this kit, the gates, are quite fat so that does mean they are very prominent and they are placed in 
less than optimal position. So this is just a bit of a leftover aspect of the older tech from 2010, but besides both of those, not much cleanup really besides the basics. Also, I will mention that you can see where the shoulders connect to each other inside of that, which isn't the most pretty looking aspect, but once again, can't be seen from the front perspective. As for size comparison, there it is side by side with the classic Gundam. This is the revived version. And there it is side by side with the newer version of Sharzaku that came out in 2020. So as you can see, the goof, or should I say the goof custom, is definitely a pretty big, tall and bulky mobile suit. Finally, there's that full 360 degree spin so you can see this from every angle just in case there's something you wanted to see that I somehow forgot to mention. This is a pretty cool high grade. For something that is 10 years old, I really do like it. Once again, it does drop the ball a little bit when it comes to articulation. We will look at that later. But aesthetically, this is one beautiful little high grade. I like the look of this more than I like the look of the Master Grade EZ8. Also, if you've got the Master Grade version of this, drop it down in the comments. Is it good or not? I've heard a lot of mixed things. Have considered getting it, but haven't gotten around to it yet. Anyway, let's get on to those accessories. So rewinding back to the beginning once again, here is the high grade goof custom with absolutely everything that it comes with. And it comes with quite a few things. The main thing being that absolutely awesome Gatling shield. So let's check it all out. So as for the hands in here, we've got a standard pair of closed fists. A pair of open fists, these are for holding on to the weapons. And we've got a widespread dynamic right hand. Now this is unusual because we usually only get widespread dynamic left hands. This is because of the particular weapons loadout this kit has, but it is cool to see something a little bit different. So checking out the weapon loadout, and the first thing we've gotten here is this. This is the Gatling shield and probably one of my all time favorite weapons. And in this kit, it looks pretty damn good to boot. Gatling shields, whether it's this one or the one that is on the Strike IWSP, I adore. It's such a cool idea. It's funny because this actually takes me right back to Gundam Breaker because it was my favorite weapon in that because it just looks so awesome. Seriously though, Gatling shields, the best. So this doesn't just directly attach onto the goof, you actually have to put this on first, which is the three barrel machine gun. So this right here is essentially this variant of the goof's answer to the standard goof's left hand, which was, well, pretty much looked like that. So because this has been made optional equipment, that means this goof has a more standard mobile suit kind of look, which makes it look like a big buff Saku, which is awesome. Attaching this onto the goof is the simplest thing ever. You just pop it onto this tab like so, holds on with a poly cap, and looks pretty damn cool. This machine gun has a sight that can move up and down. There's down, there's up. And we also have a little bit of an armor tab around on the other side right here. There it is all the way up, and there it is all the way down. Attaching this on is pretty simple as long as you do it the right way and follow the instructions. That is attach the hand on back first, then the front section, it attaches on like so, looking good. And then the wrist goes into the arm, and then the peg of the shield goes into the machine gun. If you don't do it this way, it can be a real pain in the butt, so make sure to do it right. When this is attached, it looks badass. There is a really prominent seam though on that flat part on the front. No big deal, a little bit of cleanup. And even from the inside aspect, this looks pretty cool. There's a little bit of a hollow segment where the ammo belt is attaching into the Gatling, but that is about it. Otherwise, this weapon looks so, so cool. Next up then in here, we've got the heat rod. To attach this, you just need to pull this little cap section off the right forearm, stick the wire in like so, and we've got an anchor segment up top, flexible wire for the, well, wire, and this is perfect for fishing for some easy eights. Lastly then in here, we've got the heat saber. This is pretty much color accurate. The blade, according to the instructions, should be in a more metallic silver color than the black that it is. Attaching it is simple, just into that sandwich style hand like we see over and over again. And that right there is what it looks like attached. Simple, but effective. So now moving on to the articulation and as usual from the head down. So for that, I will mention that this thing is solid as a rock. You're not gonna shake this out of its pose. That is without a doubt, but that does come with the fact that this kit doesn't have a whole lot in the lines of articulation. But hey, let's check it out. There's the head all the way down, all the way up, no joke all the way to the side, all the way to the other side, so it is very limited. The mono eye can also move from the left to the right like so, using this handy dandy switch down at the bottom. Next up there's the arm all the way down to all the way up, so once again a little bit limited. Next up then we've got that full rotation all the way around, then full rotation at the upper arm. At the elbow it's just a simple 90 degree bend, nothing more. We've got the standard ball joint wrist, rotation as well, 
On this kit, the entire torso can basically do nothing. So no side to side, no up and down, none of that whatsoever. So very paralyzed in that particular area. This also includes all the skirting armor. This barely moves whatsoever. The back does not move at all. The waist is also just a standard peg on a forward and back slightly moving mechanism. So that does really limit the kicks. All we get is that to the front, no joke. This out to the side, once again, no joke. And this out to the back, so the legs can barely do anything. As for the bends at the knee, it can go all the way from there to there, so that's not that bad. All one smooth motion. So now getting that foot on the ground to test out the functional movement. There is it all the way to the front, so not too bad. Flipping around too, all the way to the back and not the greatest. And there is that side to side pivot. So yeah, the articulation on this kit is abysmal. If you're looking for a kit for cool poses, photos, action-packed, dynamic, over-the-top poses and stuff like that, then this is not the kit that you'd be looking for. However, if you want a kick-ass looking goof custom for up on your shelf, then this will do that perfectly. Poses though, not a chance. So anyway, that right there is it for the review, and I have to admit, I was struggling not to give this bronze tier because of the absolutely awful articulation on this. It's just, well, well below basic at this point, but it's got so many other awesome aspects. The looks, the color separation, the weapons. Besides the articulation, this is a fantastic high grade, especially considering it is from 2010 and is 11 years old now. Sure, there are some minor aesthetic issues like some mold lines and knobs, but that was definitely par for the course for back then. So that's why this kit to me is silver tier. Bad articulation shouldn't be enough just to end this in the bronze tier pile. It's still an impressive little kid besides that. So if you are thinking of one, articulation isn't really your biggest concern, then I say go for it. But if you're going for something that looks cool in a pose, want something that looks very dynamic, this may not be the one for you. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. Thanks to Raid for sponsoring the video. And as always, I will see you next time. Oh yeah, you can also store that heat saber in there.